And that kind of brings us on to your topic a bit, Gar. You know, talking about players who are physical over, uh, you know, your sort of flair, skill type players. I think you cited the whole Re- Messi and Ronaldo debate as as a ma- as a main kind of comparison. Um, so I'll let you take the floor here and well, yeah, I suppose for, for me, Andy, you know that you know that starts it off. You know, Messi, you know, being naturally gifted, talented, technically talented, whereas Ronaldo, you know, ha- had to do everything for himself, had to go into a gym, had to bulk up, ha- had to, you know, really strengthen, you know, from a muscle point of view. And uh, yes, they are two different f- physically physical specimens. Let's be honest here, but we've also you've just touched on, you know, Harvey Elliott, small dynamic player lots of skill about him goals boy people you know probably doesn't look like he has loads of pace messi's not blessed with pace other lads but you know when these boys go back but go boy people that they look like lighting um but they leave people for dead because they're so skillful and, and technically you know technically gifted and you, you see times gone boy where you know managers have gone for big big players and you know Mourinho is known for you know like, looking boys over six foot you know and big big units of players we've seen Vieira dominate in the past because he's a, he's a, he's a unit of a player if you you know look, look at us now we're not we're not actually blessed with height you know Kanate has just come in he was an absolute monster mm-hmm. van dyke big player but you look around the pitch we're, we're not blessed with you know big physical players up oh, front three not not mm-hmm. tall at all and uh, midfield three last year again all all in and around six foot couple under so it's it's something that you know we've, we've seen a sea change in as far as the last year um with, with especially with english players um, a lot of smaller guys, Sancho, etc., coming along with, with the the changes they've made to their academies over there. Um, you know, there was often that you know adage of scouts looking for big physical players, and when they come over to watch players, they look and they turn and ask, "What? Where's the parent? Can I have a look at the height of the parent of what what they'll eventually turn out looking?" They're going, "What?" Yeah. And I, and I and I actually saw it live with a keeper. That was funny. You're on tonight. <laughs> uh, a sixteen-year-old and, and the scout turned around and said, "I want to see the mother and father." And I was I was sitting behind, going, what, "What's what's that all about?" It was, it was a good few years ago. And they want to actually see the mother and father and see if the keeper was going to be over six foot. And it's going to be self, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, if, if he has talent, if he has yeah. talent, you know, you know, we've seen small keeper Shay Given obviously was, you know, made a career. He wasn't a huge guy. Mm. Um, could have come out for a cross against France years ago. But listen, anyway, it didn't happen. But <laughs> you may never, you never come off as well. Yeah, well, listen. Uh, to me, it's it, it's it's still something that goes on in, in in the in the world. But listen, certain managers like you know more technical players, and I touched on Mourinho, who likes you know someone over six foot who's physical who can put it about, uh, especially from a defensive point of view. Uh, so it's um, you know for me, it's it, it's intriguing how how people are, do look at players in in the modern day. Yeah, look, I think it's fair to say that Klopp looks for a mix between both. Okay, in the height department, the likes of Mane and, and Salah mightn't be that big, and look, especially uh, uh, Thiago there. Like they're they're small enough players, but they're very strong. They're centre of gravity. They bang f- fucking players out with their arse. Like you know, they're and they're physically as well. They're they're as fit as they come. Um, he wants them. He wants them to be able to run, but he also wants to be able to be technical as well. So, like Kevin O'Sullivan there, like. Fabinho and Hendon, yeah, they are six foot, but you look across the Premier League, there's a lot of players that are six foot four, you know, and are, are we exposed when it comes to set pieces? Certainly, I think Klopp is addressing something there by bringing a, a big physical player like Kanata in to defend from set pieces. But I think you can have a mixture of both. Um, Davo, uh, look at, looking at um, Messi and, and Ronaldo. We all, I think we all have our, you know, our favourites <laughs> over one. Uh, it's Messi for me. But if you were bringing Messi or Ronaldo into Liverpool, a young Messi or Ronaldo, who would you be picking? Who would be best in the Klopp sort of system? Oh, well, listen, I, 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 would, I would probably, listen, I think physically the attributes that Ronaldo has are second to none, really. I think, listen, I would be Messi as well. Um but I think Ronaldo deserves an awful lot of credit for kind of the regimented nature that he's he's put like I'd say he doesn't put a thing in his bleeding body that's like do you know what I mean? He's just he's that regimented 
like like he takes everything so serious, no alcohol, no just a supreme, supreme athlete. Whereas Messi on the flip side is more ta- he's more natural, he's more talented, it's the Maradona kind of player, bomb with a ball at his feet. Um like so the comparisons it would be messy for me. Um it, in a club style, listen, I, I don't think you could go wrong with either of them, to be honest with you. Do you know what I mean? And I think Klopp would take a hand off for either of them. But yeah, listen, I, I, it's the one. It is messy for me. I think one of Ronaldo's greatest achievements is having half the world think he's anywhere near Messi. But on the flip side of that, what like I said there, what I would say is I think he deserves an, an awful lot of credit for mm-hmm. like for getting getting himself to the level that he's at because it isn't like natural the way it is natural for Messi for Ronaldo. He's had to walk and Moises, he's walked his fucking stones off to, to get where he is. So I think he deserves a, a, an awful lot of credit for that. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's hard to see where the next Messi and Ronaldo are going to come from because I think, uh, you know, especially in the last kind of 10 years since they've kind of broken the scene and, and, and played the whole professional career, it has gone very physical, the game, hasn't it? Mm. I mean... Players are being brought to their, you know, the absolute brink of fitness. And it, it seems to be, you know, who, who has most in the tank after 80 minutes is now what, what's seen as the edge over. And we have, we, we don't start to see players being able to express themselves in the same way as Messi and Ronaldo did at the time. Like, if you, if you ever remember Ronaldo when he was breaking into the United team, it must have been very frustrating for United fans because he did lose the ball a lot. He was doing step overs and making a few poor decisions. Um, but Messi, when he came into Barca, he, he was knocking down the doors. He was unbelievable, and he was allowed to express himself because because of the, the just the nature of the player. But P, is it is the game suffering? Do you think that we're not seeing those sort of players coming through anymore? Yeah, I, I think to be honest with you, there's a lot of what Gareth is saying. An awful lot of scouts are looking for. I mean, they're looking for, and I know this from friends of mine who have sons are coming of age. They're looking for a young player at 15 who's you know if he's not six foot two already is he heading for six foot six there's a lot an awful lot of that going on but you'll see it time and time again you know the very very best players um have the other side they mightn't have it physically or rather they mightn't develop physically early enough but they'll certainly have it me- mentally and later on i'm going to talk about harry kane and with my subject and the fact, you know, the fact that I think an awful lot of his lack of loyalty or professional lack of loyalty is down from from being dismissed as a kid, uh, you know, for being chubby and being not very athletic, as he was described as by Liam Brady. You know, and all of a sudden these kids have sudden growth sports and they're not they're not always genetic. It's sometimes it just happens. And I think if I'm being honest with you, yeah, the game loses. I mean, that's why you see and we're probably seeing an improvement in lower levels of the game. You know, you're you're seeing kind of players who have, were overlooked at big bigger clubs. You know, going to smaller clubs, and all of a sudden, you know, I, and I think in a, in a way, it's good for the game that you see players who would have been elite players 15, 20 years ago, kind of stepping down a, a little rung, and you see you see these teams kind of you know, you know, making the making it to the highest level. So I, for me, it, yeah, it's 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 that old, you know, physical. You know, physical ability versus that mental strength. I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo is six months older than Wayne Rooney. And Wayne Rooney looks like a fat middle-aged man <laughs> who has no place on a football pitch. Where, and that's no disrespect. That's no disrespect to Wayne Rooney, who was an absolute phenomenon. But Cristiano Ronaldo has elite mentality. When Wayne yeah. Rooney was doing mm. whatever he was doing when he was, you know, at his peak, Cristiano was making sure physically that his peak was going to be longer than anyone. I mean, yeah. that fella is so mentally strong that he decides the type of player he's going to be and that he's going to be the best of that type of player. Right now, it's the classic number nine. Yeah. And for me, he's arguably the best classic, besides Robert Lewandowski, the best classic number nine in the world. So the next place he go, he'd probably go back to Real Madrid as a number nine, maybe even to replace Karim Benzema, who used to be his foil. But Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo, I hate his guts, but he's an absolute phenomenon of, of yeah. and a testimony to mental strength. The fact that you can achieve anything if you set your mind to it. I mean, I know he had to step all of, overs mm. in the lollipops, but that's 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 a different player. Now he's oh, just look. 
It's Gabriel Batistu, the territory where he is. The way he heads a ball, the hang time that he gets. You know, he's a classically brilliant number nine. And he can be for another four or five years, if he feels like. Yeah, no, absolutely. Look, he, as much as we, we probably despise Ronaldo and his cockiness, um, you can only admire him. I mean, I think if you're uh, if you're chiseling a player from scratch, you know, <laughs> on FIFA or something, mm. you're just making Ronaldo, and then you're you're trying to add in a, a bit of Messi as well. But but these are these are the players that are probably making it now, um, that are physically strong, that can do all the tricks as well, that can that can then run for ninety minutes and do what the man do what do what's expected at this level because I do think the game has gone extremely physical and it's at a kind of a it, at a brink point. I think the way injuries are happening now as well. Um, mm. Jonathan there saying didn't Thiago do an interview recently saying Flair and technical players are getting overlooked um, from our physical well-rounded players. But sure, look at uh, Thiago. He's left out of the Spain team mm. for most of the Euros. And over a way more kind of um, industrial type of midfield, I think someone else said that in the comments there. So that's kind of just the way. The yeah, game but a, the Andy, sorry, the best example I can give you is Jack Bourne. Jack Bourne, a Cham uh, is he at Chamber Grovers now? Oh, he's, uh, no, he's, he's, he's in Limassol now, yeah. Yeah, but 15 years ago, Jack Bourne would have been Ireland's best player and he would have probably been at a top, certainly a top 10 club. He would have been a very, very good mm -hmm. player at an Aston Villa. You know he he's not he's not even knocking at the door for a, for a Premier League club. Jack Bourne is phenomenally talented, but he's not the most physical guy. I just think he's the best example you could possibly have. But I think, who should be elite? I think. He's but I, but I, I think what you're what you're saying now, Pete, is and you're saying Gareth probably now more on this as well. You're starting to see. Look at the likes of Sancho and look at Bellingham was going, is going to be a superstar anyway, even though he had broken in at Birmingham, was mm. playing at 16, 17. A lot of these players that they're moving, they're like, if you're not playing me, I'm off. And the, yeah. the, the likes of the German teams, particularly, I'm sure it might come into other well, leagues, maybe like France as well. They, they, they're, they're going to, they are going to yeah. the academies in England yeah. going, this fellow's a star, but he needs to play yeah. and they'll yeah. take them. Yeah. Yeah. And players want to go. Yeah. Jaden Sancho can give you a hundred meters in about twelve seconds. Mm. You know, Jack Bourne wouldn't give you a hundred no, meters yeah. in twenty. You know, yeah. and this is the point. Why does that really matter? I mean, I come from the school of let the ball do the work. You know, and mm. if you're smart enough, and Gar Bourne would subscribe, a Gar will subscribe to this. If you're smart enough, you don't need to be an Olympic athlete. You know, I mean, three years ago, Usain Bolt tried to make a football career for himself. Now, that's the fastest man that ever lived, and couldn't. So you have to have a brain as well. You know, you have to, you have to, and that's why I'm picking on Jack Bourne single. There's many Jack Bournes out there. Many, I mean, when I lived in Norway, I played there, there was a player called Eric Mikkelan, who was just a phenomenon. This guy played in Greece. He played all over the place, but English clubs wouldn't sign him because he couldn't do the 100 meters in, in 11 or 12 seconds. But it doesn't matter. You know, Matt Letizia is a fat man and was a fat man as a player. But I'm going to talk about him later on. But, He'd, he'd still walk sideways and Paul Gascoigne you're depriving the game of how beautiful it is I'm telling you someone like Andreas Iniesta or even Chabi, some of the finest exponents of a football I watched Chabi make 104 passes against England in 2007 I think it was or maybe just before that and make 104 complete passes no mm. English player got near him but I'm telling you if he had have went on trial as a young flick to an English club, they would have went, can't yeah. run, can't um, jump, is not strong enough, we don't want them. Yeah. And that's why England, I'm sorry, win fuck all. Yeah. Because they too, <laughs> oh, they're obsessed with the, the physicality, the physical side. Iniesta, Xavi, even this young flick at Barcelona now, these these guys wouldn't get a look in at an English club. And it's it's their own loss. It's their own loss. Yeah. 